What is up, everybody? Welcome into a winning episode of the Brahma Bullpen. We got confetti and we got music. We beat the Vipers. Let's go. Wait. Bad acting. Bad yeah. acting. I just I just wanted to feel that feeling again. You know, um, there was a lot of there was a lot you there was a lot of stuff going on on Twitter. And I just kind of got caught up in it. We'll talk about it later. That little opening will make sense when uh, I tell you what the St. Louis Battlehawk did to their fans later. Uh, but for now, <laughs> it, it was pretty good, man. I had I had a lot of respect for whoever handles that Twitter account. It was funny. But, hey, welcome into the Bronco bullpen. Uh, seems like every week we're coming in here after a loss. Uh, game seven. Uh... Here we are, week seven. Uh Producer, just throw it up. Throw up the, the score picture there. Brahma's 12, Vipers 26. You know what, Hoss? I'm going to tell you what the what the worst part about it is. Two weeks ago, if you would ask me if I was worried about Orlando, I would have mm. said, nah. Two weeks ago, if you would ask me who the worst team in the league was, I would have said oh, it's probably the Vipers or Orlando, and then the Brahmas were maybe like a step above. But right now, sitting here right now, there's no doubt that we are in trouble of not only missing the playoffs, but leaving our first year as being the worst team in the league. What do you think, Hoss? You know, there's only so much that you can take into it. You don't have a quarterback. I mean, I want to say that too for the other team, but that was homeboy's first game for first Vegas. Game. And he came out balling. First game. Hey, balling. I know you got the stats. You ready with those stats? Mm -hmm. Hit hit me. Hit me with his first ever start in the XFL stats. Let's have it. 21 of 31 for 264 yards and two touchdowns. And then he's also got eight carries for 25 yards. And he was going up against arguably one of the best defenses in the league, correct? Like that's that's correct. Um, so, our defense may missed a lot of plays, missed a lot of tackles. Um they played decent, they didn't play their best, that's for sure. I mean, there was definitely some highlights in the game, and then there yeah, was things sure. that just there, there was things that just made it seem like well, just another San Antonio Brahma football game. Opening drive, our boy Kurt, Ben Kurt, goes down. You know, they converted on a third in like 15 to keep that drive alive right around the 50-yard line. And then they wound up going there and getting that tud. Uh, you know, Fred Brown, he was – you can't ask for a better game out of him. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, producer, let's just throw the let's just throw the Fred Brown highlights up there. Banker on the center. What is that? He'll throw and hold in by Fred Brown. The Mississippi State Bulldog has the promise on the board. Opening drive. Here's Brown with the return. Brown, one man to beat. Brown looking for the lone kick return touchdown this season in the XFL. And he has done it. Fred Brown, 96 yards to the house. There you go, Hoss. Kurt Binkirk to Fred Brown in the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. He also returned uh a kickoff. Kickoff for a touchdown. <laughs> uh we had 12 points. Guess what? They're all scored by the same guy. Nobody <laughs> else scored any points. Where, where's the tight ends? Where's the running back? Uh Akers made some good plays, you know, in that first drive. He was getting in those little slots, you know, outs and doing what he had to do. Uh but the Akers had a hell of a game. Yeah. Had I a mean, hell of a game. I mean, give, give me some give me some receiving stats. Give me Brown and Akers stats. Let's just see what we got. So Landon Akers had six catches for 75 yards. He was targeted seven times. Uh Jacquees Patrick had four uh catches for 45 yards. Elise Mack, three catches, 28 yards. Jonathan Hillman, six catches, 24 yards. Fred Brown had two catches, 22 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, you got Yelder for one catch, Vasher for a negative catch, and Travis Tolvanin for one catch for 12 yards. Wild, man. You know, I uh, last week I wanted Juwan Pass to just 
get the ball the whole game. And, uh, of course, they brought in Kirk, Ben Kirk, made the, the flow of the offense was just herky-jerky. And then this week, we're like, okay, well, at least we're going to get Kirk, Ben Kirk uh, up there to uh, play a full game, you know. And then we, we do got some pictures of what was going on with, with Kirk, Ben Kirk. Uh, everybody already knows uh, he's another injured quarterback. Um, I was thinking, is it bad luck? Or is it bad offensive play that's getting all of our quarterbacks killed? Is it a mixture of both? I mean, I tend to say if none of them have, were ever tackled, none of them would be hurt. If you're asking me, I would say that it's just. Yeah, I'm I, asking I would, you. I wouldn't what do you say think bad, we're doing here? What do you think I we're would, doing here? I wouldn't say bad offensive play. O-line. I mean, O-line is giving up everything on on Kurt Binker, bro. One time, like Landon Akers was lining up pretty close to the uh, offensive lineman, and the the announcer said Landon Akers didn't pick up his guy. That's not true. He, there was five rushing, and there's five tackles. The guy completely just couldn't handle the defensive end that came around, and even Kurt, like he thought that he was being blocked, and by the time he saw, he was like, "Oh shoot!" and did. Just kind of got lit up, but this was after they had already lit him up like three times. Yeah. You know, yeah. thanks you for see, keeping that G rated. I thought the shoot was gonna. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I'm I, trying very hard. It could linger. Hey, it's, it's it's rough, right? And you know what? Offensive Player of the Year for the Brahmas, uh, Romo, right? Mm. But Romo had some competition. Producer. Throw up the video of the Vipers punter outplaying not only our kicker, but also outplaying our entire football team on special teams. Throw it up there. As well. And now they're putting it all together. Had a huge lead in the opener against Arlington as well and lost by two. Terrell Bonds to the 30 sideline. This is danger territory. Makes the kicker miss. Ball is out and it's pounced on. Michael Carrizosa recovers the fumble. Haas, not only did he punt it, not only did he make the tackle, not only did he strip the ball, he recovered he then, that. He then dogpiled on the bottom uh -huh. and got the ball back. Uh -huh. That's and he didn't want to get up either. He no, was no. ready for it. That's want to. That's want to. That's want. He's not more athletic than our special teams players. Okay. Right. Let's be honest. Punters and, punters and kickers have athleticism 100%, but they're not the most athletic guys on the field when they're on the field. There's always guys who are bigger, stronger, faster than they are. So you go down there and you rip that ball away from somebody as, as that position is set up. He just outplayed everybody on the field for that position. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Want to bro. He just wanted the want to. He just wanted the ball more than the, than the next guy was wanted it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, so let's tell you, let's go ahead and just get this out of the way. Throw up the Kurt Ben Kirk tweet we talked about a little bit. You can see it right here. Kurt Kurt informed all the fans. You know he has like a cult following on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He said the kid got some bad news. Three count them three fractured ribs per source. Uh, I think he's the source. But, you know, uh, he got hit in the game. He went out of the game. He came back in the game. Then he got hit more times in the game. And then later, ribs got broke. So the hit that put him out of the game at first, Haas, didn't even break his ribs. It was a hit later on in the game. And if you look at that first hit, man, that looks like it should be the hit that broke his it, ribs in the first hurt, place, dude. you know? It hurt. Hey, uh, Hoss, uh, you know, uh, that one last time you were able to get into the doctor's office and get some inside, mm. get some inside video. Mm. Well, I was able to go in there and get some inside x rays of Kurt Pinkirk's ribs, okay, okay, ribs from the game. So, uh, producer, go ahead and throw that up right there. This bam, there Damn. you go, rough, rough, rough. Hey, Damn. he got hit, he comes back in, he got hit, he stayed mm. in, he got hit, he got hit, and finally something broke, right? Mm -hmm. But he's got that dog in him, at he least he fought for us. Uh, I tweeted. Uh, I tweeted at Ben Kirk. Uh, I said, "Hey man, first drive was money. We appreciate you putting it on the line for the team." He he liked my tweet. He tweeted me back like, "Man, I appreciate it. I wish I could finish out the season for you guys." I 
think I know why he had a cult following. Fan engagement, sure. plays with heart. I don't know if he's that good of a quarterback. I I haven't got to watch him play, but for a little bit, uh, evidently you think he's got like some really good mechanics. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I still I still believe that absolutely. Yeah, I'm not denying he made some pretty good throws while he was being able to stand on his feet. But you know, there's only so much you can do when you're basically getting killed every play. Like literally, like you're pretty much getting killed every play. So, uh, even anyway. even plays where it's not showing them being sacked. He's still taking hits, having to rush. But that wasn't just it's not just Ben Kirk. It was every it's every quarterback that we've had. Yeah. Just let you know 100%. there's a reason why all our quarterbacks are hurt. Yeah, 100 uh, percent You know what so, I feel like? I kind of feel like 49ers. Obviously, we're not as good as them, but they just kept getting the quarterback hurt, 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 you know. Yeah. I just wish we had someone like Glock Purdy that could just I mean, step it up. And carry us, uh, but even uh, him, the poor guy, running back like McCaffrey back there, just carrying the rock. Uh, I mean, hey, I can, guess he can throw that thing too. I guess our defense is what's the, I would I would say you know comparison comparison. Our defense was pretty close to San Francisco's defense. We got a good defense, man. And I, and I'm I mean I'm talking about on the level, right? We're not right on NFL the level team. of XFL. Yeah, if you yeah, we're on the XFL level, we would be the equivalent of the 49ers defense. So. But uh, Greg Luca, my boy at the Express News, um, I don't know. Greg talks more to Coach Hines Ward or like his own family members and friends. Like this dude is must be. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he lives next door to Coach Ward. I don't know. But uh, he's reporting that uh, Jack Cohen, who's been hurt the last two weeks, uh, is healthy now, so he'll be the starter. Uh, so it'll be Jack Cohen. We will have Jawan Pass as a backup. And Hoss, did you hear who we picked up? Did you hear who our third quarterback is going to be? No. If we had drafted this guy at the beginning of the year and he was fighting for a roster spot, I might have been a little excited for him to be on our league, be on our team, excuse me, uh, Paxton Lynch. Oh, great. He's, he's going to be our third QB, man. He's... He's he is successfully. I believe I read a stat one time where he's like the only player that got cut from the USFL and the XFL. From and, lit, no, from, from every from, league, every, every league. football league. Yeah, so, he's been cut. Dude, he had an arm in college, bro. I watched him play ball in Memphis. He was he was good then, but you know it hasn't translated to the pros. But he's going to be on our roster. Give us that third quarterback because we'll probably need to do the chances are he'll be playing by the third quarter the way things have been going. I mean, I'm just saying, dude. Like, uh, I mean, I don't really know what to say oh, about man. that, but. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about the playoffs later. We'll talk about where the team's going from here. We're not out of it, but we're not in it. It's kind of one of those things where the ball needs to bounce our way. We need to deliver. Speaking of deliver, we got Houston coming into the Dome this Sunday at 2 2 p.m. Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to be down there in the Dome, but producer, go ahead and throw up the promo art if you wouldn't mind. Uh, we got the go for three ticket package for remaining three games for as low as 60 bucks, 20 bucks a game. Trying to get people into the dome. We got three, three more games there. Trying to get as many people in there as we can. Uh, they're doing uh, for anyone who's listening that may or may not be going to have young kids. And if you're into this kind of thing, they're going to be doing an Easter egg hunt after uh, the game. I don't know what's going to be in there in those eggs, but I'm going to tell you another thing. If any of you little munching can come at me with a cascaroni, you're about to get slapperoni. You know what I'm saying? No cascaroni. <laughs> don't come up to, to Haas or the Brahma bullpen with a cascaroni Sunday at the game. I'll tell you what, though. If uh, any kid is able to cascaroni me, and kid, look, grown men, I know there's I know there's at least one grown man who watches this podcast that's going to try to cascaroni me, uh, I will slap you. But uh, if a little kid comes up, who knows, man? Maybe, maybe I'll let him crack an egg on my head. Hoss, you ever had a cascaroni? You ever had a cascaroni on your head? Definitely not. And you've never had a cascaroni on your head, man. I went to a little inside scoop. You know, I went to Southside here in San Francisco. Southside High Southside. School. Southside. Southside. What up, uh, bro? You you were getting cascaroni in the head mm. this time of year. No, no matter how hard you tried, bro, it was going to happen. But and now it's even worse for you, right? Because you know. It's damaging. I'll just put it that way. It's damaging. 
If Cascaroni hits me right now, dude, it, it leaves marks, bro. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, dude, I don't want to talk about the Brahmas anymore. Mm. Let's just talk about the league. Are you cool with that? You got something yeah. else on the Brahmas? You got any stats? You got any amazing stats you want to put out there? Uh, the only like amazing that stat that I've seen is Landon Acres, six catches, 75 yards. My boy been balling. Love him. Thank you, Landon. We love you. Uh, shot, wait, hold on. The uh, number... Oh, Drew Beasley. Two sacks. He he was playing pretty good that game. Delonte Scott got a good sack. I think he got a, an assist sack, too, with Drew Beasley. The more I think about it, our defense wasn't as bad as I made it seem like, so let me apologize. But, I mean, they still gave up 26 points. They still missed to tackles. They still gave up a lot to of Vegas. To Vegas. Dude, to a first-time quarterback. I, I didn't even want to talk about it because it was kind of frustrating. They had a, a little slot route across the middle. Yep. Little little seven, eight-yard pass. Yep. That the receiver just basically outran everybody right up the seam. Boom, touchdown. And it was just like, you know, I mean – but I understand it. I'm not blaming the defense. You, you, you're discouraged. You're not pumped. You're not in the game. Your offense is just struggling. They, they let Rod Smith or whatever their running back's name is literally run up the gun on eight or nine dudes. And like, then like, like hurdling. He didn't know. He, oh, he hurdled for a touchdown. My crazy God. Dude. Anyways, I, I don't want to talk. Let's, talk, let's go on. Let's, uh, let's just go through the league. Uh, producer, throw up the scores pick. You got the the Battle Hawks at Roughnecks 24 15. The good news uh, there is the Roughnecks lost. And, you know, maybe that'll help us in some mystical way, mysterious way this weekend. The Roughnecks will have a two game uh, uh, hangover. One game will cost them two. You know, all the analogies, whatever, dude. We'll take sure. whatever we can get. Sure. Uh, DC Defenders at the Guardians, man. Uh, ballers. Ballers, bro. Ballers, bro. A hey, uh, producer, just throw up the video. Just throw up the DC video for me, real quick. Uh, let's watch that catch in the back of the end zone. Wheels, Deer King in at quarterback. Here comes the pressure. King gets away, throwing across his body. End zone. No way. You cannot be serious. Briley Moore with the touchdown reception. De'Ara King. What a Houdini. Bro, King, second string quarterback, has been a lightning rod for DC all year. Gets that rollout, throws a perfect pass. I mean, it, it, it couldn't have been an inch this way or that way. It, it wouldn't have been caught. And then I still don't think that guy got his toe down. I don't know. But exciting uh, play. That shows the skills player that shows the skills of the receiver, the skill skills of the quarterback, the skills of the old lineman. Basically, all the skills that we wish we had on our offense, DC, uh, of course, represented. And then the Guardians look at the Guardians, man. They got their first win 37 36 over DC. They beat the best team in the league. Uh, Normandy was uh, responsible for six, six, six touchdowns, right? I mean, you <gasps> hold on, hold on. <gasps> <gasps> what what's wrong? We can't even see six <laughs> touchdowns in four five games, bro. Uh Please. bro. Check this out, dude. This guy uh was kicked off the team for allegedly cheating. The Twitter world immediately presumed guilt like they do. Uh and uh it finally all came out that the leaked place was him telling his buddy Jack Cohn that uh he wasn't playing this week. And it was after the depth charts were out. So everybody who has who read the depth charts that we knew that uh, Dormady wasn't going right. to be on the roster. So it was just completely ridiculous. I wish I knew that fool that posted it on Twitter, like breaking news, giving up plays kind of bull crap, just so I could call him an idiot to his face. Uh, and then the Seattle Sea Dragons beat Arlington, which uh, was probably the most important win for Brahma fans over the weekend. Uh Arlington and the Brahmas have the exact same record still in conference play, so there's still a chance. We need the Renegades to keep losing, and we need to start winning. Uh, if we remember last week, Haas said Arlington was going to lose every game that was left, and we were going to win this weekend against Vegas. So Haas is uh, 
complete moron. He has no idea what he's talking <laughs> about. No, I don't, I don't know, man. But uh, producer, go ahead and throw up the recap pick I sent you there. The XFL Week Seven in review. Um, it's pretty cool. The XFL starting to do like these little shots of the of what happened last weekend. So check it out. St. Louis Battlehawk kicker. Another kicker taking the spotlight from my boy Romo. Donnie Hagman set a league record, broke Romo's record, 59 yards. 59-yard field goal. That's money, dude. Uh, Romo said when he gets back in the dome, he, he's attempting anything 65 or under. That's my that's my dog. What he said. That's my dog, bro. 65 or under, just put me in, coach. Hey, yeah. and if it and if it's first and 10 and we got a 63-yard field goal, we should just kick it. I mean, I'm just saying it'll keep our quarterback from getting sacked and having his ribs broke. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> I, I digress. 38 million fans have tuned in to watch XFL games this season. You know how they always say that the stats uh, can be manipulated and sure. saying, sure. okay, 38 million fans, bro. You do know that there's like 500,000 people watching every game. Right. So 500,000 hardcore fans watching three or four games a weekend. You do the math, bro. 30 million. Okay. Like, it's not like there's 38 unique right, individuals. Right. It's, it's the same 500, 750,000. That watched the it is. last yeah. seven games yeah. or six games before this past weekend. Of but course. Nice, nice try on the PR there, you know, trying to, mm. trying to pump that up. Uh, 361,000 fans in attendance. Look at through week seven. Not not four <laughs> through uh and of the three hundred and sixty one thousand fans of what uh seventy five percent of them were in the two two St. Louis home games. I mean, I don't even know, right? The one Brahma game to start the season before everything went to hell, <laughs> and then the, the St. Louis games, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I could tell you, dude, that the Brahmas would have won, would have been winning, and we'd be more in the hunt. There'd of be course. people at the game. Of I'm course. almost I'm almost scared to see our attendance on Sunday. Look, dude, I'm I'm as hardcore fan as they get. And there I got stuff going on in my life, right? Uh that is pressuring me to not be at the game. And I'm I'm like I know, even I know. In, even in my mind, you know, I'm only human, the thought is creeping in. Do I want to go watch them lose or do I want to do what I have to do? And it's like this whole bounce neck. Of course I'm going to be there because there's only five games a year and I want to be there. Uh I love football. I love the Brahmas. I love my team, but I also have pressures pulling me away from football. Right. Um, you know, and it's, it's like that for everybody. I'm not a unique situation. I'm not the only one who's got stuff going on or whatever, dude. So the team has to do their part, man. And, and, and keep the fans hype, keep us engaged by being competitive and playing good football. And it's just hard, man. Uh, when, what, what do we got to root for losing by less than six? I mean, I mean, I don't know. Cause 15 points is what we've been asking for for the last four or five freaking episodes. Can we get 15 points? I mean, we got 12. I mean, I guess I should just go be thankful we got 12. Uh, anyways, uh, and then, of course, the last uh, bullet point there, playoff positions are on the line uh, for some people. But Wait, you skipped the social media. Oh, social media. Okay, sorry about that. Well, that you know one kind of blew my... That one, you want me to say it? Yeah, you do the social media. It says 413.9 million social media video views through week seven when i first saw that i thought for sure it was a misprint but the more i thought about it, i was like i guess 413 hey. that seems reaching a lot hey man well at least 21 of those views were people who follow the brahma bullpen on twitter let's come go. out come let's out go. and yes i'm using the same i'm using the same stats that the uh, xfl did i am compiling seven weeks of data to say 21 people have looked at my tweets uh, anyways, got you. hey anyways hey one thing while we're talking social media the San sa brahma bullpen on twitter shall no longer be impersonated uh you know we had a couple of clowning accounts that were impersonating us but now we got that twitter verified blue baby Check mark. Come on, we've verified SA Brahma bullpen. Let's go. All right, man. While we're talking about all that stuff, let's look at the TV ratings, man. So, uh, the X Fan Show they do a good podcast or St. Louis based podcast. Me and the producer were actually on their podcast. Hoss, were you you were you on the podcast or it was just me and producer? We were we were uh, heavily uh consuming liquids. I don't remember you being there, but we were on their show. 
uh, they did a live react from here, uh, game one at the. Oh, game. I was there. You were there. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember, dude. That was a long, it was six weeks ago. But uh, anyway, so we got their stats here. Um, <clears throat> they did a pretty good deal. Uh, what? What, nothing, dude? Nothing, what nothing bro. You? Bro, tell me what that means. I didn't nothing, know what you bro. Did. Are you giving me? Are you giving me hand signals, bro? No, like, because is... I know you would not know what they mean. Okay, don't we... shoot, dude. You better just text me or something. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Put some, put some bass in your voice, boy. Do you <laughs> say what you just <laughs> say? Say what you mean. All right. So, anyways, uh, it was pretty cool. They did it because they rated it out of the top 150 cable shows. Obviously, you know, streaming numbers are in here. So you got the Seattle Arlington game, 177,000 people watched it, 101st uh, ranked. You got the Brahmas getting their butts kicked by the vape. Do you think a snake in real life would beat up a Brahma bull? I don't think so, dude. I mean, this team is letting down cattle everywhere. And that's hard to do. Hard. We to love do. cattle. Go ahead. Yellow belly slithering. Anyways, uh, dude, 356,000 viewers in ESPN2 was a 50th ranked show out of top 150 dc orlando 365 they were the 19th rank you can see how just their time slot changes based upon changes of ranking and who's watching uh then st louis uh at houston which was a great game uh 502 000, number 25 rank show so there you go with that uh next thing we'll go ahead and pull up throw it up producer let's look at the xfl vote power ranking so uh for those of you folks that are on uh, Reddit, Reddit's a different type of social media. We like to say the intellectual uh, part of social media. Reddit uh, gives, you can write more and there's better conversation on there. There's still idiots everywhere you go. But anyways, this is voted on by Reddit folks. Uh, power rankings, of course, DC Defenders, number one. Then the Battlehawks, number two. Seattle, number three. I think those two could be interchanged. Uh, and then Roughnecks probably right where they should be, number four. Uh, Renegades, Guardians, Vipers, I think those three can all be interchanged between five, six, and seven. I don't have any heartburn with where they're at. Uh, and then, dude, there's no – I can't even make a case right now that the Brahma should be above the Guardians or the Vipers. I mean, can you? I mean – No. If our defense had held up this past games, you could, but they didn't. So we can't even keep a quarterback, bro. I know. What well, th these power rankings can't mean much for us, honestly. Just be just based on that fact. And yeah, all man. these teams have they like, find a quarterback for a week and they come up balling. <laughs> like yeah. yeah, man, it's rough, dude. Um I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, every week we try to end the episode with what the Brahmas need to do to win the next game. And I'm going to just say what it is. We need to score 15 points. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. F score 15 points, man. Score 15 points. It's like, is the number impossible to get to? If you have a kickoff return for a touchdown, yeah. And you still only score 12 points, bro. Yeah. Your offense only scored six points. Yeah. The week before, the defense scored the game's only touchdown. Right. Right? So it's like you got to figure something out, man. You, it, I don't understand. I don't mean – I don't know, dude. I'm not a professional, but you, you got to do something different. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Different. And it's not really anything different on defense. It's just the offense. I mean, and Heinz Ward says he wants to be number one, be the best special teams team. We weren't the best special team by no means. Yes, uh, whenever we played, I mean, we got into the, we got the kick return for a touchdown. I mean, they got a fumble on us on special teams, and but our kicker didn't even get a chance to kick a field goal. I mean, I mean, what do you want him to do, man? Cut Romo some slack, bro. You you do put some respect on my boy Romo's name. I I want them just to. To start setting up first and ten with Parker Romer down in the backfield, just trying to kick that thing. So what we got to do is return the ball every week to the forty yard line on the kick return. Get first and ten, forty or forty five, and just kick the field goal. Got to. We'll, we'll get the dub right. And you know, any special teams that should be a plus. We should have had twelve, thirteen points, and that touchdown mm -hmm. be the plus. That's it. That's what is killing us. It just sucks. I don't know, man. Hey, man. I'm going to just say right now. 
score more than 15 points. Offense score more than 15 right. points. Offense, right. not combined special teams and defense. Offense score more than 15 points. Anyways, we kind of open up the episode talking, joking around a little bit, uh, pretending like the, uh, you know, pretend like the Brahmas got a win. Uh, you know, everybody knows what happens in April. People do April Fool's joke where they, that what happens is they lie on Twitter, but then they get away with it because it's like a joke. Whereas the rest of the year, they just lie on Twitter. Anyways, anyway, but uh, go ahead and pull it up, producer. Official statement from the St. Louis Battlehawks. Following a vote from the XFL owners, the Battlehawks have been officially approved to relocate to the greater Los Angeles area and will do so for the 2024 season. Bro, epic troll job right there. Epic troll job. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows the St. Louis Rams to L.A., Deal. They still yell. Uh, what's his name? Cronky, the owner of the. I think it's Cronky. Is how you say it. They still chant Cronky sucks at Battlehawk games because he took the Rams out of St. Louis and moved them to Los Angeles. Uh, you know, and then they just keep the cho job going. Oh, St. Louis is known for its incredibly hardworking, passionate, proud people. Bringing the XFL to St. Louis 23, 23 will go down as the proudest moment in league history. The move isn't about whether we love St. Louis or fans, but rather about what is best for the interests of the Battlehawk organization. We would like to thank the XFL's owners and all the Battlehawk nations for their diligence, dedication, and we look forward to building a world-class franchise in Inglewood. So that's the biggest cop I've ever heard right there in an official statement. Epic troll job, right? That's so bad, bro. I feel then, bad for all uh, the you, fans over there. I mean, let's be honest, 98% of people that read that immediately knew what it was. But, you know, there's like 2% of those people that read that and were like immediately, initially mad, upset, shocked, disgusted, <laughs> sick feeling, all those things. Um, you know, kind of like what we did to start the episode. If you didn't watch the game this past weekend and you got that initial feeling that we won a game and then we, we just came with like a big rock and crushed that. Got him. Mm. That... All we got to do is score more than 15 points and beat Houston. We need God. to beat Houston, and then Houston needs to beat St. Louis. And Arlington needs to lose. I mean, that's what I meant. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Arlington has to play Houston, and Houston needs to beat Arlington. Excuse me. Thank you. That's why you're here, Hoss. You got anything else before we end this beautiful episode? Episode 11 of the Brahma Bullpen. Let's get a win, offense. <laughs> That's all let's, I got. Let's get a win, baby. Horns forward. Let's go, Brahmas.